where she obtained an honors degree in nursing. Since that time, she's been employed in Detroit at the Henry Ford Hospital, meaning the urology. In 1997, I achieved my, or her, she achieved her certification in urology, which was recipient of the McFarland Award for Excellence, and achieved the highest mark on the exam. So she's not only a nice looking lady, she's a smart lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'll fit right in here. Okay. In 2010, Andrea was honored for excellence in nursing during nursing week at Henry Ford Hospital. She's been a guest lecturer for many organizations, including nursing colleges, universities, the Ambulatory Nurse Council, TIMM Medical, and the BUI Support Group. While working at the Henry Ford Hospital, she was also a clinical nursing instructor for the University of Windsor. Participated in many uh, audiovisual marketing materials, both for BUI, which I assume is a company, in 08, 010, 011, and 012. Her major accomplishment has been helping us set up the computer. Uh, and also, <laughs> the most important thing is the development and successful implementation of penile rehabilitation program for prostate cancer patients at the Henry Ford Hospital. This has recently been branched out in Windsor, Ontario to local hospitals. She's married. You have two teenage children. Oh, you have no gray hair. Oh. <laughs> and who keep her very busy and provide her with a well done life. So please uh, join me in welcoming Andrea. I'm sure you're going to have lots of questions. We, we, we talked about you from Ottawa to uh, Hidden Valley uh, yesterday, Andrea. So uh, the boys of Ottawa are all pumped up, so to speak. And uh, anyway, uh, without further ado, let's welcome Andrea. To Um, to Jerry, where's my mustache? Well, I will wear a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do that later? <laughs> I was just so, oh, thank you. All right, you, you guys are so kind. I was welcome to such warmness, and um, I, I just can't thank Jerry enough for getting me here. And not that I didn't want to come here, it happens that I'm here anyway to celebrate my mother who's turning 75 and she lives in Gravenhurst. So he told me, he says, well, we're having an event. It happened to be the exact same weekend I was down. I says, it's no sweat off my back. I'll go over and talk to your group. So thank you for having me. I think it was great that I can spend the morning with you. Um, I do know a few faces. Uh, Luke from Windsor, he's one of the ones that I'm most familiar with. I have done most of my work in Windsor and Detroit. Detroit is where it all started. Can we go back one slide? Um, thank you for the wonderful introduction, John. But I was just going to elaborate just uh, a little bit. <laughs> um, the Henry Ford Hospital is where I started my career, and I had some wonderful mentors there uh, that helped me grow and learn and motivated me to do what I do. And I have to say that I'm extremely passionate in the field of what I do. Um, I'm fortunate to work with wonderful urology staff who not only treat prostate cancer, but are the scientists and the research behind everything that I talk about. I do find that I became passionate in what I do because I see that there's a need, a really huge need, to care for these, um, not only men, but couples after the treatments for prostate cancer because you've got quality of life issues, correct? quality of life issues. Everybody gets scared when they hear the word cancer, but we do a good job at treating that, but we just have to do a better job of helping men through those other stages of healing, and that's where I feel that I really fit in, and I'm, I'm hoping that eventually there could be more of me and other nurses that I would like to um, pull into this field, because it's not a job that one person can do others, you know, alone. 
I can't globally help all kinds of couples. But I'm going to start locally. And between Jerry, wherever you went, Jerry, Mr. Kielsticker, where are you? He, he left? Yeah. yeah he, he left me he, alone? He, he, you're not alone. Okay. <laughs> well, there he is. So with the help of Jerry, he says, you, Andrea, you're going to be global. You're going to be all over the map. And I says, Jerry, I have a full-time job at Henry Ford. What the heck? How are we going to do this? But he says, no, we're doing something together. And I have all full trust in you, Jerry. So you will give me gray hair probably by the time I'm done this. But anyway. Um, but what, what sense of personality that you guys have, I have to thank you for making me feel welcome and, and uh, warm to this environment. So uh, anyway, Henry Ford Hospital is where everything did start. Um, uh, I could go on and on about it, but I did get a, a whole bunch of inpatient and outpatient experience in the urology field as a nurse. And I think that when I made a decision to write a certification exam, I was kind of a nut. I, I worked with wonderful nurses in, in our floor in neurology, and breaks or lunches, they'd go to lunch. I'd take all my books and go to the big library on the 17th floor of Henry Ford and study for the certification exam, because I was just really enjoying it. And they're like, what are you doing? Like, can you get yourself out of your books? I would take vacation days off to stay at home, and I knew it was slower in the clinic, and I would study at home. So. I don't think that I'm an exceptionally smart person. I just was lucky to get an award saying that I was the smartest because I think I devoted about 90% of my, my waking hours studying. So if you're going to study that hard, of course you're going to be at the top. But anyway, um, I took it all the same. Um, I guess we can go to the next slide. So it's enough about me. I'm here because of all of you. And I feel that I can help many of you in many different ways and help learn something that if you take away anything from this morning, from what I talk about, there will be one little thing that you probably learn, if not more. So I want to know in the room, you don't have to divulge your history or anything else, but I'm assuming that all men in the room have had a diagnosis of prostate cancer. Okay. Who has had surgery. Women, keep your hands down. <laughs> okay, so of uh, the men that's sitting in the room here and have been treated surgically, who has been treated in the last year? Okay. Who's been treated uh, within the last 10 years? Yeah, okay. All right, just trying to get a feel of this. Um, who has had radiation therapy, whether brachytherapy or external beam? Okay. And some of you maybe have had a combination between surgery and radiation, maybe for recurrent PSAs, correct? Okay. And who might have had hormonal therapy? Okay. Mm -hmm. And active surveillance. Did anyone choose active surveillance, which used to be watchful waiting before treatment? Okay. Now, the big question, who is affected by the quality of life after treatment? Okay. Who has gone on to defeat that and has improved and it's a, it's a thing of the past. Now you have reached your plateau, you feel good, you can't get any better. Anybody feel that way? Okay. So you can see by the showing of hands that quality of life is a huge, huge issue for men after being diagnosed with prostate cancer. So I'm going to touch on some of that in, in some way with you. Thank you. Um, I don't know if any of you have heard of uh, Manny Menon. He's the urologist that started the robotic prostatectomy. Has anybody heard of the robot? Anybody have the robotic surgery? Okay. In Ottawa? Okay. What urologist in Ottawa does Bro. it? Dr. Dr. Rodney Bro. Bro. Okay. 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 Um, well, Dr. Menon started it back in 2000 or so. I was lucky to watch all of this evolve. And uh, I am proud to say that it's spread now throughout all of the world. Um, he is uh, certainly a man of distinction, um, sometimes has his criticisms, but I do have a lot of respect for him. 
um, only because, uh, not only because he's such an innovator, I have had a, such a unique job in what I do at Henry Ford uh, as a nurse. As a nurse, you think of somebody that works shift work, somebody that's at bedsides, running around with their head cut off, we're busy, we're stressed, there's all kinds of different positions. And I did do that for the first two years of my career. But then, the last 21 years, I've worked with this man, well actually I was there before him, but I worked in urology with some fantastic urologists and a beautiful job. That daytime hours, no shift work, I now have a very autonomous job which I'll get into my role and my description of what I do. Uh, but he allows me to pretty much run the show there. And I have to say, I'm enjoying it. The autonomy that I get in working at my facility. Henry Ford is a very uh, big uh, uh, city hospital. We do see worldly patients globally. And I've had some wonderful experiences uh, traveling abroad and uh, lecturing in different facilities and so forth. So I'm very, very grateful uh, to Dr. Menon. He developed what's called the Veil of Aphrodite procedure. And that is something that I'm going to show you on another slide and get into the nerve sparing.